Hi, welcome to Matt Seller Music. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play Blackbird by the Beatles. This song was originally recorded by Paul McCartney on the Beatles' double album called The Beatles, but is more commonly referred to as the White Album because of the album's cover was completely white when they released it. Now the first thing we need to go over is the right hand technique. So Paul McCartney uses a, a technique where he alternates between the low notes with his thumb and the high notes with his index finger. Now I modified it slightly so that I'm using actually both fingers, but either one is fine. Basically there's two types of picking patterns that he does. There's the pattern for the short chords. And then there's the pattern for the longer chords. I also found that if you're having a hard time strumming with your fingers, you can also just pluck the, the notes. It still gets the same effect. Again, Play what feels comfortable to you. Don't feel like you have to play the song exactly like he plays it. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the way he's voicing the chords. For the chords to this song, he's using what's called tenths. A tenth is really just a third, but the second note, the third, is moved up an octave. So instead of playing a third like this, you move the second note, the higher note, up an octave to get what's called a ten. So it's ten notes away from the root note, which, which hence its name. So the first chord that he's playing is actually a G chord. minor chord, actually A minor 7 to be exact, then he goes to a G in first inversion. Uh, first inversion meaning that the third now of the G chord is at the bottom, and he actually has the fifth up on top, the G open. Then he slides up to another G chord, but using tenths, again, breaking up those middle notes by just taking the two outside notes. That's the opening chord progression. Next, he has this uh, ascending uh, chord progression moving up to an E minor chord. This is actually really cool what he does here. So he has C, C sharp diminished, D, D sharp diminished, to E minor and he throws in that open G string in between to fill in the gap. Now the other cool thing that's happening is if you take a listen to the bass note, it's actually just a chromatic line. Going through those chords to give it this really good voice leading. chord right there and then he brings it down so then he drops down this low note down a half step to give you an E flat major chord then he goes brings that down another half step to D D flat or C sharp diminished C and then an, another minor four chord C minor and this drops down to a G in first inversion, to an A7 chord, where we have an A, a G, and a C sharp, making it an A7 chord, just with no fifth. Then we have a D7 sus4 chord, which is D. Finally, back to our G major chord. Then he throws in a little turnaround to break up the first and second verse, which is just C, G over B, A7, D, so. 
sus and back to G. So it goes like this. For the B section of the song, or the chorus, Paul modulates to the key of F by moving to an F chord. And he actually just descends, using tenths, descends down the scale. So F, E minor, D minor, 11 with the, with the G, to C, and then B flat, and then back up to C. Then he repeats this again, but in order to get back to the A section or the verse, he goes to an A at the very end. And does a 2-5 in G to bring us back to the main section of the song. That pretty much covers all of the parts to this tune. Now, the next step is to listen to the song and see to hear the order or the form of the song. I recommend actually seeing if you can play along with the recording to see if you can get a feel for it and learn where each part goes. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something today. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video.